Hey everyone, Jason here with STS. Welcome to my shop. I'm doing a second video today wearing my same and caffeine we trust shirt, which I used to be a lot more of a caffeine junkie before I started doing microsurgeries. Um, since then I've had to kind of cut back on my intake a little bit because the slightest little jitter will ruin your whole life. <laughs> and uh, So anyways, this phone already has a job ID on the back of it. Check this one out, guys. Let's turn this on. This is a uh, crazy, crazy visual. Oh, the refresh rate on my camera is tuning it out. It's these checker bars that wave down the screen in a wave. Can you see it? Check that out. That is an iPhone 6 visual touch IC failure. And unlike the 6 Plus, it's hard to influence it by bending. Look at this thing. Now I've been through a lot of these. This is a uh, this is a Mason failure. I never touch the Cumulus IC on an iPhone 6 unless replacing Mason yields no touch. Um, look at that. Yeah, that's a hell of a failure and no touch whatsoever. All right, let's pop this thing apart. I'm going to do this as fast as I can because my time is limited. I've got two hours here before shipping cut off, and there are a ton of phones that have to go out today. I've been shipping, oh, I don't know, anywhere from five to eight per day. Um, and me being the only ones that's actually that's doing these board level repairs like this, um, that's saying quite a lot. But I don't see the iPhone 6 with a visual failure near as often as the 6 Plus. This one's got the tape that they put a tag on the back with. It's actually holding the screen on. Um, so I don't see the visual failure near as often with the iPhone 6 as I do the 6 Plus. But they still fail. Now, since this one is producing such a crazy visual effect. Um, I'm not going to be reballing this one. I'm actually going to replace this IC. Um, right now I'm out of new Mason ICs, but I do have um, new Mason failed installs. Um, back before I started reballing them at all, um, whenever I would fail to install one properly and it would sit wrong or I'd know that it got shorted underneath or I had to pull it off, um, I kept all those. And man, I'm glad I did. All right, now on the iPhone 6, for some weird reason, I don't have the issues with components becoming detached topside due to me replacing the IC on the bottom of the board. So I should probably apply a little heat to the sticker to peel it off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but if you go slow enough, you'll be all right. Also be careful of the phrase on these stickers. The black stuff isn't conductive, but when you get down into the metal mesh that makes up the actual EMF shield here, um, EMI shield that is conductive so all right let's grab a sharpie and a sticker and we're gonna stick a number on this board because I am extremely careful to keep track of everybody's stuff uh, especially whenever you get 8 10 12 of them <laughs> on the hot plate that's a sight to see I'll take a picture of it sometime Make sure we don't misplace this board. You know, we've got a tag on the bin and a tag on each device that's going to spin any time outside of the bin. So let's switch you over to microscope. Let's have a look at this iPhone 6 board. And you can see we've got quite a bit of this rubbery crap in there next to it. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, and because of that rubbery crap, I am going to tape the board down to the bench. Now I am, ex how can you not see? Did I really screw this up so bad? I'm really hard headed about shielding. I have started shielding when it comes to plastic connectors once in a while, but when it comes to stuff like this where I need to refloat this whole big old area, um, I just, I don't shield it. I, I just don't. Um, it seems to take a ton, I mean a ton more heat. So. I'm going to try to sever the bond here where Apple has decided to glue all this shit down. 
just a little bit of a scrape here. Now on the iPhone 6, I'm not going to be doing any, anything special. Although, what do you think the odds of that M1 jumper is causing the same sort of similar visuals? Probably considerable. But I have done so many of the iPhone 6, I've never... I mean, it just, it just don't come back. It, it don't come back for touch-related issues. Now, I'm always blowing the heat away from the board as much as I can. That's one way I get away with my lack of shielding. Now, I'm trying to warm this entire board up because in order to float this thing, you've got to float a pretty good area anyways. All right, it should start to give any minute. There it goes, and we'll lift it up. A little sloppy there. That's what I get for trying to record videos. Now sometimes if somebody is in a madhouse, like a just an absolute mad rush, um, if somebody's in an absolute mad rush, and you can see, I actually did get this a little too hot. We got a little bit of a bead poked out there around the side. Um, if they're in a mad rush, I'll use tiny little bits of flux and not ultrasonic clean these dudes. But if you're not in a mad rush and you don't want it like on day two or day one, um, it's going to be ultrasonic cleaned. Alright, I do see a pad on top of one of these leftover solder balls, but I don't see a missing pad yet. So, I'll have to look at this a little closer. That mason I see, I'm throwing in the trash. So, let's flux this dude up. Again, continue to smooth these out a little bit. Okay, so there's our missing pad. Um, that is a no stuff pad. We're not going to worry about that one. Everybody else here should be reasonably happy. So I'm going to grab my little exacto tool here and I'm going to try to make sure all of this stuff here is cleared back. Yeah, I really don't know why, but I, I have never had an issue with these things being detached. Um, these components that are under that rubbery overfill, not like I have on the 6 Plus. It is just, it's a disaster for it. It's like they're, they're always detached. Once you heat them and they got that crap on them, they're always detached. All right, so let's grab one of our failed install Mason ICs. Keep in mind, it is the wrong bin. <laughs> Ew. Okay, so let's grab us an IC from the junk pile. Not really junk pile. These are new ICs that I attempted to install, and um, they didn't sit down on the board right. So they're still brand new. They've never been used. They just need to be balled. Need somebody give them to give them the gift of new balls. So here we go. Time to clean my iron. Look at all this black crap I just dropped on this chip. All right, so everybody looks pretty happy there. Um, Shake, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. All phone toys. These are the tweezers you uh, tweezers. These are the Q-tips you sent me. I'm not sure what is different about them compared to the ones I buy at the Dollar General store in the cosmetics section, but I like these better. They seem to have less fibers, and the points on them are like hard. They got really hard points. 
All right, so let's put some new balls on this Mason IC so that I can get this job done. I'll get this video done. And then I'm going to move on to um, the next thing I'm going to do today. I think it's going to be an iPad 2 pair of digitizer connectors. I've seen the package of those in the mail, and I've got one in line here to do those on. All right, so let's put a little bit of my... 6337 leaded solder on here and work it into the holes. I like to press pretty good and try to make sure the holes are all filled up because if not I'll wind up putting it back on there and reballing it a second time. If it's just one ball that's messed up, a lot of times or two, I'll, I'll just fix it by hand. I try not to have anything hanging around the edges because we don't want balls to be on top. Right, that's probably pretty good. Hey, don't laugh. In the past, I would not have reballed anything because I was trying to use the wrong stencils. And one of my YouTube viewers says, hey, you keep talking about reball and it's not working out. I bet you've got junk-ass stencils. I don't remember who it was, but one of you guys told me that, and I've really, really learned to take people's advice. So I ordered some new stencils, and I spent a little bit more money on them, and... Um, Look at me go. These turn out good. So I'm going to show you a little closer what my reballing looks like here. Let's zoom in here. We've got brand new leaded solder balls all over this thing. And it's actually pretty dang nice. I would rather use this than the balls that come on the new ICs. So um, I'll probably wind up reballing the new ones too. All right. So we have a uh, Mason IC here. Let me check and make sure everybody's recording because it really sucks to finish a video. And realize you were missing something the whole entire time. Like, yeah, I talked that whole time and nobody could hear me. All right, so we're going to move over out of that flux puddle and get back under the microscope here with this board. Uh, everybody there looks pretty good. I don't like the tiny little bit of solder that I've squeezed out, but we're going to check on that. Let's see if I can see the orientation of our mason I see. Sometimes I have to wipe it off a little bit to read it. 343SO694. Okay, so we need to turn it. That IC is going to sit like that. So, if I'm not playing the ultrasonic clean, I would have used a baby, baby, tiny bit of, bit of flux, and I wouldn't be adding any flux right now. But since I want to make sure this sticks good, I want to make sure everybody flows good, and I know I'm going to ultrasonic clean it, I'm going to use the shit out of my flux. Now, Flux under that big audio codec is bad news, man. The uh, headphone detect line is excruciatingly sensitive. And even this Chipquik SMD291 is enough to change that line enough to trigger infinite headphones. And the thing will always think there's headphones plugged into it. And then you ultrasonic clean it and it's fixed. Okay, so let's try to line this up a little bit. I'm probably not using my flux right today. All right, so I heat it just far, fuck, far enough to lock it down. My nerves aren't going to let me do that the way I normally do it, guys. I normally hold it in place and heat it enough to activate the flux that, um, and then take the heat away, and that locks it into place. But since I'm doing a video and with everything else that I've got going on, there's lots of things catching me off guard, like my angle of the hot air. Sorry, I forgot. Be right there. Alright, so let's get this thing... A little nudge, we're good. Alright, let the board cool. Okay, 
while this board cools, I'm going to go ahead and slip it back into the housing here. So presumably there's going to be um, traces broken pertaining to that mason I see, but with my experience on the iPhone 6 in this repair and it never comes back, um, it's going to take a heck of a lot to make me start doing unnecessary jumpers on one that doesn't come back. iPhone 6 Plus, I know if I'm not doing the M1 jumper, that son of a bitch is coming back. So that jumper's getting installed. I, I don't care what it looks like. It's always, always going to get that jumper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug the customer screen back into this phone. Although I normally use only test screens, I've become confident enough in this repair that this is most likely going to be fine, and I'm going to need to um, test as much stuff on this phone as I can. All right, so our board is reasonably cool. Let's go ahead and power this phone on. Okay, now right away we have a nice smooth white screen. We don't have any pulsating, vibrating checkered bars moving down the screen. It's weird on the iPhone 6 how when that issue does come about and it is visual, it's more of a steady, it's more of a steady pulse. Um, compared to the iPhone 6 Plus, it's just random and sporadic and it changes when you bend the phone. That's not the case on the iPhone 6. Although bending will affect the touch functionality, I've never had it affect anything visual. So, um, okay, I don't want to reveal my customer's customer because this is from another shop. So, um, let's see what I can do about that here. We're going to do home to unlock. I do have a passcode on this phone on the back. And we're going to go ahead and open up. Um, anything. Okay. You know what, I want to test this from back here because then I don't think you can see who this is. I try really hard not to reveal people's family and you know a lot of people have kids on their phones. I, you know, it's not my business to show the world that so um, this phone is now working perfectly as far as touch goes. Um, as always, I'm going to grab that bar and drop it down. I'm going to give the screen a little twist, make sure we don't drop touch. I'm going to hold that bar. I'm going to tap around on it, give a little pressure here and there, and make sure we don't have anything that's losing touch. So um, the next thing I'm going to do on this phone, as always, is touch all, test all the features, test to make sure it gets service. Um, but I'm not going to do all that on camera. Um, there's really not much to it. Um, the iPhone 6 is just one that I don't have secondary issues with. I never really have. Um, compared to the 6 Plus where I've had to learn all these little tricks to make it uh, make it something that you can stand behind your warranty on without losing your ass. Um, so anyways, that's going to be it for this video. This was a very straightforward iPhone 6 Touch IC repair. Um, the only reason I chose this phone is because it was radically visual. I like you. Sometimes you'll see it at the top a little bit. More often than not, the iPhone 6 just does not show the classic flickering visual effects on the screen that the 6 Plus does. Uh, but sometimes they do. Um, I've done a handful of them now that do stuff like this, but that's probably one of the worst ones. Um, I don't know if the Mason IC I pulled off of that board was defective um, because I'm not willing to experiment with this phone. It has a chance of being defective. This isn't the classic iPhone 6 flicker gray bar from the top. This one was very unique. So for me to reball that same chip and put it back in that phone, that would have been a bad idea. Um, so what I did, I did install a brand new chip in this phone, uh, but since I'm out of ones that have balls on them, I had to put my own balls on the Mason IC. So um, that's it for this video, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully my In Caffeine We Trust shirt was not too much of an eyesore, but um, gosh, 6,000 subscribers already. Um, it's moving along pretty fast, and when I post a video... Um, I notice it on my phones. I notice it on the web stats. Um, I really, really, really thank you all for all the attention to this channel. It's it, it's really awesome. I enjoy what I'm doing. So um, I'll keep sending this stuff back working as often as I can. Sometimes it's not worth it. And I'm sorry for those of you that I could fix it but not able to spend the time. So thank you for watching, everybody. Have a good day.